Hello everyone, welcome to new IAS daily current affairs program. Today on 11th November 2018, we will be dealing with the topics uh, Point Kalimia Wildlife Sanctuary, Paper Mache Art of Kashmir, then Mission Venus, then Mogadishu Bomb Blast and for the math session we will be dealing with Bogibil Bridge and last we have PQRS. Coming to the very first topic that is Point Calmia Wildlife Sanctuary. Uh, recently, uh, there was a study based on that um, it says the water quality at the Point Calmia Wildlife Sanctuary might be unsafe for the avifauna to feed and breed. Uh, that was uh, noted in a study that examined different pollution indicators in the water. And it says that the chemical companies and the small small scale shrimp farms uh, that pose a greater threat to the biodiversity and uh, ecosystem of the sanctuary and uh, the atmospheric temperature pH and the salinity of the water exceeded the permissible limits. It is a major threat to the ecosystem of Point Calmia and uh, Point Calmia bird sanctuary it is a protected area in the Tamil Nadu along the Park Strait uh, where it meets the Bay of Bengal at Point Calmere in the Nag Patnam district and this sanctuary was created in 1967 for the conservation of black buck antelope which was uh, near threatened that time. So uh, it is a protected area in Tamil Nadu and this was created for the conservation of black bucks. Uh, it is also designated as a Ramsar site. Uh, we have already covered all the Ramsar sites in India and uh, Ramsar site it is a wetland designated to be of international importance under the Ramsar convention. So Point Calimere is uh, one and only Ramsar site in Tamil Nadu and uh, this sanctuary is famous for large congregations of water birds including the greater flamingos. Coming to the geography of this sanctuary. Uh, so, it is basically an island uh, surrounded by Bay of Bengal, Park Strait and the sw swampy backwaters and salt pans. So, you can see tided mud flats, uh, shallow season ponds in these region, uh, in this place and coming to the biodiversity. Uh, so, this is a place rich in uh, biodiversity and with unique species of animals and birds. So, uh, you can see a uh, few species like spotted deer, bonnet monkey, then uh, wild boar, small Indian civet, star tortoise, then grey mongoose etc. And uh, bottlenose dolphin that uh, you can see uh, that is found along the shore and uh, this is a regular nesting site of olive ridley turtles also. So that's all about the biodiversity of Point Calimia. And uh, as I already told, this was started or this was cre uh, this sanctuary was created for the conservation of black bucks. And uh, black buck is one of the four antelope species found in India. Uh, the other three being uh, Chinkara, Chausinga, and Nilgai. So, uh, four antelope species are found in India. One among that is black buck, and this is endemic to Indian subcontinent. And this is categorized as least concerned under IUCN. Uh, when the conservation of black buck started in this sanctuary, it was near threatened. So uh, the uh, it moved from uh, near threatened to least concerned state. That's all about the news. And coming to our second topic, that is paper mache art of Kashmir. Uh, the Shia community of Kashmir. Uh, they have been credited for keeping alive this uh, paper mache art. So this uh, paper mache it is a, a composite material. It consists of paper pieces and uh, sometimes uh, it is reinforced with textiles uh, and this is bound together with an adhesive uh, like uh, glue then starch etc. So there are uh, two main methods for the preparation of this paper mache. So first method is uh, being uh, like it, the it uses it makes use of paper strips they are glued glued together with an adhesive. Uh, other method is that it uses a uh, paper pulp uh, like uh, paper pulp is obtained either by soaking or boiling the paper. So paper pulp is obtained and to which glue is then added that's the two methods of preparing uh, paper mache. 
and this was used uh, in ancient Egypt, Persia, India, China, Japan, Europe. So almost everywhere this was used. Uh, and coming to paper mache art, so this art uh, it has got two stages. So first one that is uh, fashioning the waste product from the pulp of paper into the desired form. First is making the desired product from the paper pulp uh, to a desired form that is called uh, shaksazi and the next stage being uh, painting that is painting process is done over this product and that is called nakashi. So two stages uh, that is shak shaksazi and nakashi and the adhesive used uh, in this process is called atij and the pulp is called shakta. Atij and shakta. So these are used to make uh, coffins and death masks, death mask in Egypt, and the um, other purpose being like a small painted box, trays, etc., can be uh, created out of this paper mache. So in uh, India and Japan, this paper mache uh, was used to add decorative elements to armor and shields. That was the purpose of uh, paper mache art. Our next topic is Mission Venus. So, uh, an 18 month old project that uh, which would which will be the first Indian orbiter mission to Venus uh, that has been relaunched and it is opening up for international experiments. So, this Mission Venus for uh, mid 2023. Uh, this is taken up by ISRO and ISRO plans to study the planet from an elliptical orbit uh, which is closest to Venus and uh, this is currently being handled by the Space Science Program Office. So uh, this would be like a Venus, this Venus voyage would be ISRO's third interplanetary mission after Moon Orbiter mission that is Chandrayaan 1 and the Mars Orbital mission. So this would be the third interplanetary mission that is mission Venus and coming to details about Venus uh, it is the uh, second planet from from Sun Mercury being the nearest to Sun. So uh, this has got a longest rotation period it is longest rotation period that is about 243 days uh, it, it will take uh, 243 days to rotate on its axis. And uh, it has got opposite direction to most of the other planets like it rotates in the opposite direction and which means that it sun would rise in the west and set in the east and uh, it does not have any natural satellites also. So it is the second brightest natural object in the uh, night sky after the moon. These are the few details about Venus. So that's about the topic coming to our next topic that is Mogadishu bomb blast. So recently on Friday there was a bomb blast uh, near the popular hotel and a police headquarters in Somali capital that is Mogadishu. The report says that death toll rose about uh, 50 and uh, Mogadishu uh, they faced uh, frequent bombing at the hands of Al-Shabaab and uh, it is an affiliate of uh, Al-Qaeda which have been fighting to overthrow the internationally backed Somali government for over a decade. Uh, so they, they, Mogadishu was facing frequent bombings uh, in the recent times and it's it is located like uh, Somal uh, it is the capital of Somalia uh, which lies to the eastern coast of Africa and Mogadishu as I said it is the capital and the most populous city of Somalia. It is uh, locally known as Summer or Hama. So it is a coastal Banadir region on the Indian Ocean. So this uh, Banadir uh, means it is a historical region of the Horn of Africa which is usually called as Banadir and it is uh, it is also an administrative region in the southwest, southeastern Somalia. So administratively it covers the same area as the city of Mogadishu uh, that is called uh, Banadir region. Uh, so uh, this coming to Horn of Africa, uh, so Horn of Africa is a peninsula in the East Africa. It lies along the south, uh, southern si side of the Gulf of Aden and the southwest Red Sea. So Horn of Africa lies in the, uh, it's a peninsula in the East Africa and 
uh, it denotes the region containing the countries like uh, Djibouti, Eritrea, Ethiopia and uh, Somalia. These are the countries uh, located in the region of Horn of Africa. Countries are Djibouti, Eritrea, Ethiopia and Somalia. Now coming to map aided program, today we will be dealing with Bogibil Bridge. Uh, you can see in the map, uh, Bogibil Bridge, it is uh, located in the state of Assam and it is a combined road and rail bridge over the Brahmaputra river. So it is a combined rail and road bridge. It is over the Brahmaputra river. It is located on the northeastern state of Assam and it is between uh, Demaji district and Dibrugar district of Assam and uh, it, its completion is expected to be at the end of 2018 and it, then it would become the longest uh, rail come road bridge in India. It is about 4.94 km uh, long and uh, this bridge is located just over 20 km away from the Assam Arunachal Pradesh border. 20 km from, away from the Assam Arunachal Pradesh border. So this Bogibil bridge, Bogibil is the fourth railroad bridge on the Brahmaputra river in Assam and uh, due to its location the bridge will be of strategic importance to India as it will significantly enhance India's ability to transport troops and supplies to its border with Tibet. Uh, coming to PQRS that is previous question revision series. Uh, the question is how does National Biodiversity Authority help in protecting the Indian agriculture. 1. NBA checks the biopiracy and protects the indigenous and traditional genetic resources. 2. NBA directly monitors and supervises the scientific research on genetic modification of crop plants. 3. Application for intellectual property rights related to genetic resources cannot be approved cannot be made without the approval of NBA. These are the three statements. So we will uh, see what NBA is all about. NBA is a statutory autonomous body. It functions under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and um, so this was established in 2003 to implement. So this is National Biodiversity Authority. So this was to implement the provisions of Biological, Biological Diversity Act 2002. So under the provision of this act, uh, this body was created and uh, this was uh, Biologi Biodiversity Act 2002 was signed after, the, after India signed the CBD in 1992. CBD is Convention on Biological Diversity which was introduced in the Rio Earth Summit. So after signing, India signed the CBD. Biological Diversity Act was created in India and uh, National Biodiversity Authority was formed. So this acts as a facilitating, regulating and advisory body to the government on issues of conservation, then uh, sustainable use of biological resources, fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising out of the biological resources. So access and benefit sharing is a part of uh, CBD. And uh, this body regulates and acts as an advising body to government of India. So also this body checks the biopiracy and protect the indigenous traditional resources may, which makes the statement one correct. It also supervises and monitors the scientific research on genetic modification of crop plants uh, and for the approval or for the application of intellectual property rights. Uh, related to genetic biological resources, uh, it cannot be made without the approval of NBA. So all the three statements uh, given in the uh, in the question, all the three statements are correct, which makes uh, the statement D correct. That is one, two, and three. And uh, additionally, it also advises the state governments in identifying the areas of biodiversity importance. That is uh, biodiversity hotspot as heritage site and uh, this is headquartered in Chennai. So uh, the answer for the question is option D that is uh, 1, 2 and 3 all the statements are correct. So that's all about the news and uh, we will wind up the session today. 
You can download the daily current affairs material from the link given below. Thank you for watching.